Hello coffee lovers. I am the only one drinking coffee in this household. In the morning I prepare two king size lattes. Later in the day I may drink one or two caffeine free Dutch coffee cups which is comparable to a Italian Lungo or Americano. After 20 years of using a variety of coffee grinders and espresso machines, I now have collected a configuration that is reasonably priced, durable and simple to maintain. I studied hundreds of videos and blogs on espresso machines and had uh, an, an numerous uh, discussions with uh, coffee experts. What are we going to look at in this video? I'm going to talk about coffee beans, water in the reservoir, the storage of beans, the grind setting and problems related with grinders, how to prepare a porta filter, this thing, so that you get always a consistent brew. Cleanliness is very important and the quantity of water to be used for the various types of coffee. One thing first, in an espresso machine you cannot use pre-ground coffee from the supermarket. In the Netherlands, for instance, pre-ground coffee is always two cores, as it is meant to be used for filter coffee, to prepare filter coffee. If you use it in an espresso machine, the water will pass too quick and you will get a watery uh, coffee. The basic challenge with you when using an espresso machine is to tune your grind setting and compaction method with your temper, your temper, in such a way that you get coffee in your porta filter that always results in the same hydraulic conductivity of the puck, the coffee in your porta filter. With hydraulic conductivity, I mean the friction the water feels when it flows through the coffee puck friction or resistance. If the resistance is too high you get bitter coffee and if it's too low you get watery coffee, sometimes also sour. As simple as that. Let's talk about beans, coffee beans. Cheap beans are cheap with a reason. I like top quality Arabica beans that I can buy in my local supermarket. I am living in a village and buying specialty coffees generally means driving to a city center. So generally I buy the more expensive coffee beans that I can buy locally. Improving your brew method in combination with a good quality coffee will result in much better in a much better brew than buying expensive beans and being careless during grinding and brewing. After a long period, period of searching for coffee beans that are really caffeine free, I found these in a local supermarket. For caffeine free beans I use this uh, Lavazzo Café Decaffeinato. Lavazzo Café de Caffeinato. There are a lot of caffeine free coffees that are not caffeine free. I wake up at 3 or 4 in the night and can't sleep anymore. And this is for the moment, for the moment, the normal coffee that I drink in the morning. Okay, water. Only use water in your machine with a low content in salts. My advice 
is that the salt content should be lower than 400 500 milligrams per liter otherwise you will really start tasting it or at least influencing the taste of the coffee you brew if you have not such tap water then buy bottled water for baby nourishment that water also all, all <coughs> practically always has a low salt content Salts will influence the taste in two ways. They will directly influence the taste, like I said, but also they will limit to some extent the extraction of the solubles of the coffee itself. Let's talk about the storage of beans. But I store it in a deep freezer. This is stored in a deep freezer. And every week, or when this tin can, which I store in the fridge, is almost empty, I refill it with the deep freeze beans and it will thaw. And uh, uh, then a few hours later, I can uh, use it in my grinder. If you run a cafe or a restaurant or a, where you grind coffee beans during the whole day, then you can store the beans in the bowl of the grinder. Because you know you get constantly fresh beans in the grinder, in the grinder section. Uh, this is the hopper and the grinder section. Uh, it's renewed every you know 15 minutes or, or or half an hour so then you can store it in the hopper of the grinder but when you use coffee at home and you have a small family like me we are with two uh, then uh, uh, you should prepare single shots that means that you have to pour an accurate quantity of beans weight beans in the hopper, grind it, try to empty the grinder as much as possible and uh, uh, work in that way. Grinders may hold back fine ground coffee when, which then oxidizes in the grinder Result, resulting in a sour coffee brew. This is often referred to as retention. So you need a grinder with a low dead volume. This is a graph, a traditional coffee uh, grinder, and this is about a set grinder. You can clearly see that here. Uh, once the beans have been ground, they there need to be a shift towards this area, uh, and there is a lot of area where the the ground coffee can stick to or can stay behind. Uh, here, the 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 milk uh, uh, coffee, the ground coffee, uh, uh, simply drops straight down. Um, grinders may also be hard to clean. And that's also a very important point. If you need a wrench or a screwdriver, uh, then this will severely hinder a rapid cleaning. You know, it discourages the cleaning and that's already a bad thing. Let's talk about our next point of attention. The quantity of beans. You will never obtain a consistent brew if you simply measure the quantity of beans with a measuring spoon. The only really accurate way is to weigh the beans prior to grinding and, for feedback reasons, 
after grinding, so the ground coffee. In this way you know if your grinder needs cleaning. Simply by an accurate weighing scale like this one it uh, measures one hundredth of a gram accurate one bean weighs about uh, one tenth of a gram spreading and tamping with the Lolite you get a good plastic spreader which is also a tamper uh, uh, since I love the look of a steel wood tamper, I bought one not long ago, but I had to modify it at several points and it was too polished. So when I twisted it, it didn't spread the coffee evenly uh, in the porter filter. So that's, uh, I had to, 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 to take off the polish with uh, coarse uh, sandpaper. It was no problem, a few minutes and it was okay. How do you keep everything clean? Because remnants of coffee, coffee grease, uh, st uh, staying behind on sieves in the porter filter and so on, they influence the taste. I, in another video I have shown uh, uh, how you can uh, maintain the Lelite, so I will not do that uh, right now. Uh, but the porter filter needs rinsing after every, every shot, I will show that. Uh, and do not forget the spout, screw it off every month and, or, or more often or less often, just what you like. And uh, clean it with a brush and a kitchen cleaner. With the kitchen cleaner I mean this uh, bright yellow stuff with which you can uh, 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 clean the, the nastiest greases on uh, kitchen equipment. Also very effective in porter filters and so on. The machine should be warm prior to brewing the coffees. Switch it on 15 to 20 minutes before you want to brew your first shot of the day and, that, and that's it. I love these uh, double walled uh, glass uh, cups. This is uh, one for, uh, for uh, 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 let me say, uh, a small lungo <laughs> or a large espresso. Um, it's uh, uh, 90 millimeters, 90 grams. This looks smaller, but it's also it's 85 uh, milliliters. So it's uh, this one is double walled uh, stainless steel. You do do not need to pre-warm this either. And this one is for my lattice, my king size lattice, Jared's lattice. And uh, that uh, um, uh, is a, a double walled glass also, so I never do any pre-warming for any cup of coffee. Once you push the start button over there, there is a gauge over there, a pressure gauge, which has a green indication and a yellow and a blue one. Well, the ideal pressure is about 9 bar, but you will rarely, well not rarely, but you know, I accept every coffee between 4 bars and 11 and a half bars. That's, that will all be drinkable. Uh, when it's uh, reaching uh, the maximum capacity of the, uh, the pressure of the pump, uh, that's about 12 bars, they say 15, but you know, 12, 12 and a half then your coffee will, uh, will be quite uh, bitter. But even when it's... Uh, I never threw away uh, 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 any coffee even when it's... the pressure was too high or too low because it gives me feedback on 
what the taste, what the resulting taste is. Otherwise, you never learn. If your express espresso machine uh, does not have a pressure gauge, uh, then you uh, uh, you uh, look at a watch or a clock and check if the extraction time is between 25 and 30 seconds for for uh, a, a cup like this for 90, 90 uh, milliliters. To prepare Gerard's latte, uh, I extract, uh, extract 10 grams of coffee in 90 milliliters of water and then add about the same quantity in milliliters of frothed milk which I uh, prepare in my Inventum uh, uh, milk frother. Let's make my second latte of the morning. First I dose my milk. Then I have this beaker which fits exactly in here by coincidence. for the milk. I don't mind a lot of art. That's for old ladies. <laughs> 